visit, talk, shake hands, and share stories. I'm going to give you a little information right quick on our Sunday school this morning. We had 162 in Sunday school class this morning. 162. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's, that's good. good. If you were here, thank you. Uh, if you weren't here for Sunday school, you're welcome back next week. You've got 167 hours to be back, right, Todd? That's 167 right. hours. Uh, we had 266 total contacts. Revolution had 108 of those. Way to go, guys. We had, I'm sorry, that wasn't Revolution. That was Adult 2 class. Right. That was Adult 2 class, Romans 8, 12. I almost messed it up. Romans 8, 12 had high contacts. Danny, were you guys sleeping up there or something today? You got beat on contacts. I don't know what happened. Uh, you'll be back, won't you? You'll be back. Uh, we had 14 guests in Sunday school. Welcome, Amen. 14 Amen. guests. Welcome. Remember our motto, if you have an age, we have a class. So if you weren't here, we would love to have you next week. Um, high attendance went to the lost and found class with 43. Way to go, lost and found. We had eight in the first and second grade. We had two contacts in the fifth and sixth. We had 27 children, 135 adults. And that's a pretty good Sunday school report. Amen. Let's give God praise for that. Amen. Man, what a great group has gathered this morning. Uh, glad to have you here. We are halfway through April and heading toward May, and God is working in lots of wonderful ways. We're going to baptize today. As you can see, i got my sleeves rolled up. I'm also kind of giving you an idea of what Samson would look like. It'd be something like this, all right? But uh, we're going to talk about Samson today and next few weeks. Uh, should be a great study. Samson had a lot of ups and downs, but, uh, man, God is, God is mighty. And uh, looking forward to bringing that to you. As we look at announcements, uh, next uh, Sunday we'll have our BBS planning meeting. Uh, we need lots of volunteers to come and teach classes and helping classes and helping all over. That will be the first week in uh, June is when we have VBS. That's June 3rd through the 7th. We have a night school. If you're new to us, we start at 6 and we go to 8.30 Monday through Friday. On that Friday night, we usually have the parents come in and the kids will do some songs and we'll hand out certificates of uh, graduation or accomplishment or whatever you want to call that. Uh, but it's going to be a great, great Bible school. We'll, we'll get you more into the theme and all that next week as we start introducing uh, BBS to you. Uh, next Saturday, if you're on the safety team, uh, the city of Kaiser is going to use our building and they're going to do some training with our police officer and uh, I would love for as many as our safety team could be here at 2 o'clock next Saturday as we kind of brush up on some things uh, and just uh, be prepared as a church. So that's this coming Saturday, the 20th at 2 o'clock. Uh, come and be a part of that. Also, uh, in two weeks, we're going to honor and uh, recognize our high school graduates. And I've got three pictures so far, three groups of pictures from three seniors. So uh, Riley Graham has volunteered to do the PowerPoint this year. Will you thank her for me for that? I appreciate that. Um, but I need your pictures by no later than next Sunday, okay? If you want your senior recognized, I need their pictures by next Sunday. That way it gives Riley time to put it all together. We'll be awarding them a Bible. Uh, we will also just be praying over them and uh, encouraging them. And so be looking forward to that. That is on April 28th. Also, we found out this week our church will be hosting the uh, baccalaureate service for RHS again this year, and I think it's on the 15th. I think that's right, uh, May 15th. It's that middle Wednesday of the month, huh? Uh, correct. Thank you. Uh, man, that's, I've never heard that before. Dana, did you hear that? You're correct. Okay, we'll talk about it later. May 15th, May 15th, we will be hosting the baccalaureate, and that's our honor to do that. And so Christy Graham's kind of working on that, and others are all working on that. And so that's a real uh, nice thing that we can do that. Um, guys, God is working. Um, I just want to just thank him. Uh, this morning in my office, uh, Jack Perani gave his heart to Christ. Jack, there he is right over there. And, uh, and then his dad, Dino, said, you know what? I was saved when I was a young boy, but I've never been baptized, and I want to be baptized with my son. How about that? Thank you. Thank you. I'm also talking to a couple of others, so we're going to baptize today. Jackson's kind of by himself, but that's okay. He's a strong boy. 
But we're going to baptize on Mother's Day. How about that? May, May the 12th, we're going to baptize on Mother's Day and uh, looking forward to that. We've got others that have joined our, our family. We'll talk to that at the end of the service. And so, man, just hang on and keep inviting, keep telling people. want to thank uh, Lost and Found class for getting out and fishing this week. And they're doing some great things in their class. And, guys, he wants us to get out there and tell others about the love of Christ. And that's what we want to do. Um, I'm not going to go down the prayer list today. I don't want to miss anybody. It is a big prayer list. We've been covering this on Wednesday night. We've also been covering it. I know you cover it in your classes, but please pick up a prayer list. And if you're just getting started in your prayer life, you know, a great way to start is, of course, making much of Christ. Uh, but also maybe take a name on here or two every day and just lift them up in prayer. And uh, it will help you uh, grow in your prayer life. And so we are thankful for that. But remember, we got several battling cancer, several going to the doctor for treatments, uh, several that have been in the hospital. Some have had knee replacements, some have just getting home from the hospital. Some are home, and, but they're very weak, and they need our prayers. So I won't go into names, but please remember these folks, if you would. Well, let's stand together. And I love to read this on the day of baptism. I thank Jackson for being bold to stand up for Christ, and I pray for his family today as they gather around as he is baptized. We do this to show the world that we belong to Christ now. Uh, we believe that Christ saves completely, but we believe the baptism is a great act of obedience. Christ did this to show us this is how you can identify with me, is to be baptized. And so today, Jackson is going to be identified with Christ. Can you think of anything greater for a young man to do than be identified with Christ? It says in Matthew, Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. And at that moment, heaven was open. And here we see the Trinity. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I love. With him, I am well pleased. Would you, would you echo those, uh, those things today when we look at Jesus and we say we are well pleased, amen? We are well pleased when you follow Christ. He will not let you down, and I just thank you for being here today. Dan, I'm going to ask you to come and pray, and we're going to get ready to baptize here in just, just a minute. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we just, uh, and we thank you for, for who you are and for sending your son Jesus on a rescue mission for us. Um, Lord, I pray um, for Jackson today as he uh, gives his first testimony um, of what you, what you did in his, in his life and, and what you did in his heart, God, and, and we're excited about that. Um, Lord, I pray that if there's people here today that don't know you as, as Savior and Lord, and those can't be separated. A Savior and Lord, that today that would happen. Man, we are not guaranteed tomorrow. And so I pray um, that we see an outpouring of your spirit, that we see an outpouring of response um, to the gospel, God. And uh, we'll be quick to give you all praise and all glory because you alone are worth it, Lord. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, if you guys would like to come stand around here, you're more than welcome. If you want to come sit on the front row, whatever you'd like to do. If you want to be right where you're at, that's fine too. Jackson, you ready, bud? Come on, man. This is Jackson Randolph. His mom, Tracy, his sister, AJ, his dad's right over here, Jeremy. And, uh, and I'm really proud of this guy. I need about a third of his energy. Uh, he has a lot of energy. But he came to realize that he needed Christ. And uh, you sit here today, and you're telling the Lord that I'm yours, right? 
and he wants to follow in believer's baptism, and he wants to show this congregation that he belongs to the Lord, that he is in the Lord's team today. And we are so thankful to get to the honor of baptizing him, and I'm so thankful that you're here to witness this for him. And I ask you to encourage him, to lift him up, uh, to be there for him. And uh, listen, we grow together, amen? We grow together. And uh, man, I'm proud of you, bud. I'm proud of you. You ready? Okay. Jackson Randolph. Jackson, upon the profession of your faith in Jesus Christ, I baptize you this, my brother, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. How's that, buddy? Amen, man. Proud for you, Dad. God bless you, bud. Bless y'all. Isn't God good? Amen. Let's celebrate. Let's sing. I'm gonna lift up the name of Jesus. I'm gonna sing of my joy since he came. I'm gonna tell of his power every day and every I'm gonna lift up that wonderful name, Lord. I'm gonna lift up that wonderful name. Sing again. I'm gonna lift up the name of Jesus. I'm gonna sing of my joy since he came. I'm gonna tell of his power. I'm going to lift up that wonderful name, Lord. I'm going to lift up that wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Lord, we just invite you in. Uh, Lord, we want to give you our, our very best. Uh, Lord, whether it's in our giving, in our, in our singing, um, in our just locking in to your word that's going to be preached, God, whatever it is, we want to do it as an act of worship, yeah. God. Uh, Lord, we just, um, we recognize that it's not about us at all. It's all about you. And, uh, Lord, just help us to stay focused on that. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You can be seated. Uh, it's good to be in God's house. Amen. Amen. Hey, you're back. That's good. <laughs> all right. Uh, man. I, my prayer, what I'm longing for is that um, there won't be baptism Sunday anymore. It's just Sunday <laughs> that we just baptize every week. And that's my prayer. And, and it takes fishing, don't it, J.S.? If we ain't out there fishing and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, then we won't see near as many people baptized. So, um, and, and Scripture tells us that we can hasten the coming of Christ the more we share the gospel. And so, man, I got to tell you, the older I get, the more I look forward uh, to just being with him and not, not being bound on this earth and by pain and suffering and loss, but, but being the perfection of the person of Jesus Christ. Come on now. That's different, amen? amen. That's different. Uh, man, I, I do pray. We talked about this morning in our youth class. Uh, we talked about worship today, but that worship's just giving everything we have to the Lord and giving God what he's worth. And, and we ask a question, are you giving God your best? I don't know. Not, not always. Um, so I'll pray, you know, so far you can't do anything about what's happened. But moving forward, I'm just praying if you haven't given God your best in, in worship through singing, uh, in, our, in our giving, in, in, in just locking in with God's word, I pray that we'll do that today. Um, and I just pray that uh, 
he alone's worthy. Amen. It's not about us at all. And I don't ever want to be about us or me or anything on this stage. And Todd will be the first one to tell you, it is about God and it's about his word. Because the gospel is the power of God that brings salvation. That's it. That's it. And we got family and friends who are lost. And uh, I, I kind of think back to when uh, he, God talked to Moses. He said, I've heard the cries of, of my people. So I'm sending you, is what he said. And uh, so we, we see that people are lost. And God's going, I know. And I'm sending you to tell them. And there is no plan B. That's it. So, man, let's give God what he's worth today. And I'm just praying. Uh, I love these songs that, that God would just open our hearts to what he has for us. And then just be reminded of the faithfulness of the God that we serve. Amen. share something with you. I uh, got a letter this week and at the end of the year they give churches a letter to show you what you've given and uh, part of our work in the Southern Baptist Church is the cooperative program. The cooperative program is the money that we put together and we send to our state. About 47 percent of it stays in the state of Arkansas to do mission work and about the rest of that, what's that, 53% goes to do foreign work around the globe. Also, we give a percentage every month to disaster relief. And you know that is a group of folks that goes all kinds of states, all kinds of places when tornadoes, when hurricanes, when things hurt, when things tear up, these folks move into action. And we have some in our church that are very active in that. We also give the children's home. And by the way, Brother Allen was so grateful for what you gave last week and we thank you for that but all that together guys i was just overwhelmed once again by your gen generosity at the bottom of the letter that all added up to one hundred and seven thousand dollars that y'all gave last year Amen. and i appreciate that so much <laughs> and the amount is is great it's it's great because you're faithfulness but i want you to know that when you give it's not just to keep the lights on. It's not just to pay our salaries. It is to spread the gospel. It is to fish. It is to tell people about the love of Jesus. And I thank you so much because that's a percentage. So the more you give, the more we get to send. And you guys have done that time and time 
and time again. And so my heart goes out to you, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart for being generous and giving so that the word can go around the globe. And we can do that right here from little Kaiser, Arkansas. We can make a difference in the lives of people, not to mention Operation Christmas Child and all the things that you enjoy doing. I give God praise today, and I thank him for your, your giving. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just uh, thank you today. I thank you for these people. I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to give to missions. I thank you that it goes around the globe, not only works here in our state, and our country, but also around the, the globe to share uh, about you, Jesus, about your love, about your death, burial, and resurrection. And so, Lord, I pray over this offering that it will be multiplied, that it will continue to go to share the good news. And, Lord, we will continue to go right here in our own backyards and tell people about the love of Jesus. Tell them our story of what Jesus has done for us and what he has done for all mankind. For he is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to him for salvation. Lord, thank you, and we bless this offering in your name. Amen.
But uh, in a lot of these songs this morning, um, it's easy. Isn't it easy to just start to think that it is it is about us a little bit? It's easy to think it, and um, and even about what he can do for us. Um, but that song and uh, this song, and we're gonna sing a song of invitation time, response time, uh, called "Nothing Else." And those songs that just say. It's it's not about those songs. It's not about the blessings you can give. It's just about you. That's what I pray for. That's that's what I pray. That's my prayer for our church. That's a prayer for me, because it is so easy, and we have an enemy that is very real, mm -hmm. and he tells you it's about you. It's about what God can do for you. And that's what he did with Adam and Eve, right? God's holding something back, but he's. It's, it's about what you can do, and, and it's like, nah. It, it's about Jesus and nothing. Jesus alone is worth it. Amen? Amen. Yep. He's enough. Amen? That's right. All right, church. <laughs> Some of y'all falling asleep. He's enough. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, tracking with me. It feels like youth class again. Uh, <laughs> man, I just, uh, I don't know. Just, just think about the words we're singing. I don't ever want to just go and sing the words just because they're on the screen. This is a time to worship just through the words you're singing. We're going to sing words that are, that are bound in Scripture, that are, that are correct in their theology. And so um, it's, it's not to sing a song and it's not to hear us. It's, it's just about to proclaim the Word of God in a different way. And so let's praise Him this morning. Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. When everything around me is shaken, I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. He's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. So why would he fail now? He won't. Amen. He won't. I still got joy in chaos. I've got peace that makes no sense. So I won't be going under I'm not held by my own strength Cause I built my life on Jesus He's never let me down He's faithful in every season So I would He won't, he won't fail, he won't fail, he won't, no, 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 he won't, he won't Foundation, the rock on which 
statement. You know of anything that you can say that about except Jesus Christ? Nothing. There's nothing we can say that he won't fail, but he will not fail Jesus Christ. All right, kids, time for Children's Church. Y'all have a great day, and thank you, ladies and men out there doing great jobs. We turn into Judges 13. Judges 13 as we begin a brand new sermon series on the life of Samson, and we all kind of got our ideas about Samson and what he was like. We think of a strong man. We think of a, a guy that uh, had long hair. Uh, we think of a guy that had trouble with women. Oh my goodness. And uh, we think of a man that God wanted to use. We think of a guy maybe of missed 
opportunities. I wonder what it would have been like if Samson would have followed God closer. And I think we can see, I mean, I don't have the strength that Samson had. Well, let me take that back. We, if we know Christ, we have the strength that Samson had. Listen, where do you get your power from? You know, we try to, us guys, we try to, you know, we try to make ourselves better. We try to pump ourselves up. We try to be stronger. Ladies try to be stronger. But guys, listen, our power comes from Jesus Christ. And that's why we can scream out, He won't. He won't fail. He is our firm foundation. And someday, we're going to be judged on that. Did we build our house on the rock of Jesus Christ, or did we build it on our own foundation? And listen, the Bible says all other ground is sinking sand. And so, our song said that once, all right? But it's the same thing. But, uh, but it's, it's very important, guys, that we realize this about his life, uh, where his power come from. Samson thought his power come from his hair. He thought it come from his muscles. He thought it came from just him being a great-looking guy. But God would always kind of rein him back. He would bring him back. He wanted to save the people of Israel through this time. And this was a very difficult time. There was no king. Uh, this took place about, Samson will be the judge from about 1,085 to about 1,065. He's going to be the judge of Israel for about 20 years. That's not very long. That's kind of a blink of an eye type thing. But uh, he comes from a, a background uh, of people that uh, they kind of worshiped everything but God sometimes. We'll talk about the Danites in just a minute. But I want to read that first verse there in Judges 13. We're going to give you a little background, then we'll get, we'll get kicking. But Judges 13, verse 1, again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, so the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Philistines for 40 years. I may say Philistines sometimes, I may say Philistines, same people. Uh, first Philistine I think about when I hear that word is Goliath, okay? And uh, Eddie told me this morning that that was on his birth certificate when he was born, was Goliath. I love that, Eddie, that's a great story. The doctor said, you're so big, I'll name you Goliath, and it showed up on his birth certificate. So uh, he said him and his other brothers were all 10 pounds over. We need to pray. We prayed for his mama, bless his heart. But uh, Goliath. But, uh, but as we look at this, uh, I want to take you back. It's not going to be up here, Russell. But I, I want to read you a, a lengthy reading. But go back, if you want to hold your finger there, if you want to follow along in your Bible, go back to Judges uh, 2. And I want to just kind of give you the history of what's going on here in the life of Israel. Uh, during this time, and none of it's really good, okay? But ever so often, God would, would say, okay, I'll come, and, I'll come and help you. I'll come and deliver you. But it didn't seem like they followed God very long after he would do something good for them. But I want to I read for you in chapter 2 of the Judges, and go over there to verse 8. And I'm going I'm to read quick, but I want to read this. And it's not on the screen. I apologize, but I just wanted to read this to you. And just look up here if you don't have your Bible. If you don't have your Bible, bring it, okay? Bring your Bible. This is, this is, your, this is your sword. and Bring this Bible. Uh, I know we put it up on the screen for your convenience, but don't ever, don't ever substitute something for carrying the Word of God. That's the very best thing you can do. Verse 8 of Judges 2. Joshua, son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died at the age of 110. Remember, Joshua was the one that took over from Moses, okay? And so he's been, he's been faithful. He's been leading them. He took them into the promised land. He did amazing things, but now his, his time has ran out and he's died at 110 years old. And they buried him in the land of his inheritance at Timnath Harris in the hill country of Ephraim, north of Mount Gash. After that, whole generation had been gathered to their ancestors. Another generation grew up who knew neither the Lord nor what he had done for Israel. Boy, that's a scary verse right there. That, that generation that knew Joshua, that grew up with Joshua, that followed the God, they, they all died. And now it says another generation has come along, and they don't know what, what God has done for these people. Now, I don't know if they didn't share it with their kids. I don't know if their kids didn't want to hear it. But guys, I tell you, we, we in America, we've got to be real careful. I remember a long time ago when I was a kid about Jack's age, 
preacher saying, we are just one generation away from a heathen nation. And we thought, well, that, Brandon, that could never happen. We've got people that believe in the Christ, and we've got people that believe in the Lord. And every day we are seeing in our country that when you stand up for Jesus Christ, people want to exit you out. They want to erase you. They want to shut you up. They don't want to hear about a man named Jesus. And so this is a sad verse. Here's a generation that's come around that knows nothing about God. And guys, we, we've said a lot about fishing this morning. But we have to make sure that our kids know about Jesus Christ. We have to make sure that our grandkids know about Jesus Christ and our great-grands, or whatever you've got. Because we don't want to get to a point where nobody's heard the name of God in this country. If we do, it will be lights out. It'll be lights out. And I can prove that because that's happened to the tribe of Dan. Let's read some more. I didn't want to go long, but that's, boy, that's a big verse. Verse 11. Then the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord and served the Baals. There's those guys again. Same guys that Elijah dealt with, okay? The false gods, they forsook, uh, forsook the Lord, the God of their ancestors who had brought them out of Egypt. They followed and worshipped various gods of the peoples around them. They arose the Lord's anger. I, I would think that's not a good idea. Because they forsook him and served Baal and the Asherahs. In his anger against Israel, the Lord gave them into the hands of raiders who plundered them. He sold them into the hands of their enemies all around, whom they were no longer able to resist. Whenever Israel was out to fight, the hand of the Lord was against them to defeat them. And just as he had sworn to them, they were in great distress. Then the Lord raised up judges. And that's what this book is about. This whole book is about different judges that raised up and helped the people of Israel. God raised them up. Yet they would not listen to their judges, but prostituted themselves to other gods and worshipped them. They quickly turned from the ways of their ancestors, who had been obedient to the Lord's commands. And whenever the Lord raised up a judge for them, he was the judge and saved them out of the hands of their enemies. As long as the judge lived, uh, for the Lord relented because of their groaning under those who oppressed and afflicted them. But when the judge died... The people returned to their ways of even more corrupt than those of their ancestors, following other gods and serving and worshiping them. They refused to give up their evil practices and their stubborn ways. Therefore, the Lord was very angry. This is not a great way to start. And they had this cycle going on. They would kind of worship their own gods, and listen, a God can be anything. Anything that you put above the one true God, that becomes your idol. That becomes the one you worship. That becomes the one that takes all your time. That's the one you put all your thoughts into. This morning I pray across this congregation that we're putting a lot of our thoughts into Jesus Christ. Because I know the devil loves to get you thinking about other things and get you focused on other things. And they may look like good things. But I'm telling you, when our focus is not on God Almighty, everything else gets out of whack. Can we all say amen to that? Amen. We know about that. We know about that. And so, here's the cycle. We're going to worship what we want to worship. We don't need God of our fathers and mothers. And here comes the oppressors. God had let them go so far, and he said, I've got to rein them back. And he'd send whoever. In, in Samson's day, it's going to be the Philistines, but he'd send whoever, and they'd come and plunder and raid them and tear up their homes and tear up their food plots, and, and he'd, he'd get them on their knees. I don't know how many times I've said it since I've been preaching, but one thought that's stuck in my mind for years is that the only thing that makes people change is pain. Guys, listen to me. If it doesn't take change, if it doesn't take pain to, to change us for God, you're in a good spot. Because you see your sin quickly. But so many times, we have to be in great pain before we'll get on our knees, and we have nowhere else to turn. I guess I'll pray to God. 
You know what would be a lot easier? Get on your knees and pray to God right off the bat. Pray to him real early, okay? And for some reason, I hear people all the time, well, I've tried everything else. I just guess I'll try to pray. No, pray first. Pray first. Talk to God first. Nobody can help you more than God can. And so they would fall on their knees. They would repent. Lord, we're so sorry. Lord, please. He would send a judge. The judge would bail them out of their issues, and they would fight, and they would turn back to God, and they would praise him, and they'd make much of God. But it wasn't long that they started wandering toward the other gods again. You know, it's amazing that when things are comfortable, we just kind of journey out and do whatever we want. But when things get hard, all of a sudden, well, maybe we ought to give more time to the Lord. And so this was the cycle that you see all through the book of Judges. Disobedience, oppression, repentance, serving God. Disobedience, oppression, repentance, serving God. You know what? We don't have to stretch that too far that we've seen some of that in our own lives, amen? We've seen some of that in our own lives from time to time. And so, back to 13 now. This is what is going on in the book of Judges. Judges 13, 2 starts to let us know a little bit about Samson and where he's from. A certain man of Zorah, now Zorah was a town about 13, 14 miles west of Jerusalem. Now, I can't say that word this morning without stopping for just a second and saying, guys, we need to be praying for Israel. If you watched any news last night, Iran decides to throw about 150 drones over their way with bombs on them, and a few cruise missiles, a few ballistic missiles went that way, and they have this remarkable system that blows up rockets when it comes into their path. One of those, one of those projects is called David's Sling, which amazes me but it protected them and it blew up all these drones and all these rockets and saved the people in Israel. But now Israel is going to go back and they're going to, more than likely, they're going to attack Iran. And when Iran gets attacked, then Iran and Iraq is going to come back toward Jerusalem. And then the United States was involved last night as a few of our jet fighters shot down some of those drones. And Egypt's going to come with them and Saudi's going to come with them. And we've got people over there in harm's way. And it's got real, real for your pastor because my son-in-law is supposed to go there in October. And guys, I'm scared to death. But I trust God. He trusts God. God's going to use him to, to fill into the lives of men, I think. He's going to use him to pour into the lives of other soldiers. This guy wants to do something big for the Lord. He sat with us back there after Easter service and told me and Dana that he feels like God's calling him into big service. Maybe that's something in the armed service, maybe wherever, but my son-in-law could be over there fighting this fight. I'm proud, but I'm also worried about it. And that's just my prayer. But guys, we need to be praying for what's going on over there. Listen, they've been fighting all their life. That country's been fighting. There are people that fight. They know how to fight. Every big building they got over there has got a bomb shelter in it. They know how to fight. That's all they've been doing all their life is fighting. And I pray, and I look forward to the day when they'll turn their heart to Christ all the way up and down. And we'll see. But God is faithful to those, and he shows it here in Judges. He showed it through the Bible. Just like he's been faithful to us, he'll be faithful to them. A certain man of Zorah named Manoah is that Samson's daddy from the clan of the Danites. He had a wife who was childless. I don't know why, but it doesn't seem to give us the name of his mom. Uh, it's kind of a thing of that time. Sadly, the ladies were not thought of to be on the same path. And we know from Genesis that the Lord caused a woman to be made out of the side of Adam where they would work side by side to be each other's helpers. But for some reason, they chose not to name his mom. 
He was part of this Danite tribe, and Dan was one of the original 12 tribes. Let me give you a little history real quick on that. That, that Dan was a son. His dad was Jacob. He had 12 other sons. Now, Jacob had a couple wives. You remember Leah, Rachel? But they also had concubines. Concubines were other women that served Leah and served Rachel. And what Jacob was wanting to do was have as many sons as he could. Now, this is not what God would want. God has told us to find us a woman and stay with her all of our life, and that's be your wife. But when man kind of gets in the way, we come up, come up with all kind of ideas. You remember Moses? I mean, Abraham and Sarah? All kind of ideas we come up with. And so, Dan was one of the concubines' sons. Her name was Billa. And Billa had, Dan only had one true son, a true brother. His name was Neptali. The other ten were half-brothers. But these were the brothers, the same ones that took Joseph and wanted to sell him. And remember, they threw him in a pit. And when the caravan came through, they sold him to Egypt. And, of course, God worked miracles through all that. He rescued the Israelite people one more time. But they believed that Dan was probably one of the main ones that wanted to do away with Joseph. And he was the ones that wanted to sell him off. He really wanted to kill him. He was so jealous of him. So this is kind of the beginning of the tribe of Dan. This concubine was Rachel's concubine, and she wanted to name this son. So she named him Dan. Dan can mean a couple things. God has judged me. It can also mean that God has given me a son. The Danites worshipped idols. They lacked faith in God. Dan was probably given the smallest tract of land in all the tribes. It was a very fertile tract of land, but they weren't satisfied with that, and they looked to go over and conquer other weaker places. And they began to pull themselves further and further away from the Lord. It says this later in the history of the Hebrews, the kingdom was divided by Solomon into the north and south. The people of Dan were in the northern kingdom of Israel. And we learn in 1 Kings that the king Jer Jeroboam was afraid that those who lived in the, king in, in the north would still go down to the southern kingdom to worship at Jerusalem, which where is where you were supposed to go and worship the one true God. So Jeroboam made a couple other temples that weren't worshiping the one true God. And these Danites would go there to worship, and they, they were taught idol worship. They were taught golden calf worship. And they began to turn their hearts toward God, away from God. Then turn their hearts away from God. Sadly, this man made worship at Dan had been one of its lasting legacies. That's what they're known for. And if you get over in the back of the Bible in Revelation, the tribe Dan is not even mentioned. They just dissolved because they went away from God. Listen to this. Today, many people follow various man-made religions and are convinced that all ways lead to God. Unfortunately, these groups follow the ways of the tribe of Dan. Proverbs 16, 25 tells us there is a way that seems right to man, but in the end, it leads to destruction. There's a lot of people worshiping what they want to worship, thinking it's going to get to heaven, get them to heaven. There is only one man that can get you to heaven. And his name is Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way. Not a way. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Not a way. Not a way to pick from, but the only way. To learn from the mistakes of Dan would be to worship the God of the Bible alone and live for him by faith. It's amazing to me, though, that out of all this turn away from God, idol worship, disobeying God, isn't it just like God to raise up a man out of these people to rescue Israel? Or at least begin to, or at least begin to free Israel or save Israel. Let's read some more. A lot of background, a lot of history. 
The angel of the Lord, verse 3, appeared to her and said, You are barren and childless, but you are going to become pregnant and give birth to a son. I think we've heard this story before. We've heard it in the life of Sarah. We've heard it in the life of Hannah. We've heard it in the life of Elizabeth and Zechariah. Did you know Zechariah and Elizabeth go to church here now? They do. They do. I love y'all. That's why I, I, I can remember their name. <laughs> y'all got a sorry preacher. <laughs> the angel of the Lord appeared to her and said, You are barren and childless, but you are going to become pregnant and give birth to a son. The angel of the Lord. Don't, don't sleep on that just yet. That's a pretty big deal right there. Let's read some more. Now see to it that you drink no wine or other fermented drink, and that you do not eat anything unclean. You will become pregnant and have a son whose head is never to be touched by a razor, because the boy is to be a Nazarite. Dedicated to God from the womb, he will take the lead in delivering Israel from the hands of the Philistines. Now some translation says he will begin the salvation of Israel. I think when we get to the end, we'll see where he did some mighty work and killed a bunch of people. Empowered by God because everything else was gone. But I think if he would have listened to God closer, I think if he could have been more focused on what God had for him, I think he could have rescued Israel even greater. You know, having potential for God and doing what God asked are two different things. We can have a lot of potential for God. But when we let the world get in the way, we miss the blessings of doing what God asks us to do. We miss the blessings. He's going to raise him as a Nazarite from the womb. This was a vow. You can read it back in Numbers. Numbers 6, 1 through 21. And they weren't to cut his hair. He wasn't to drink any fermented wine. This is what he was going to dedicate his life to, to make Christ the main thing in his life, make God the main thing in his life. And he said, I, not only him, but I want you, Mom, to do the same thing. She had to dedicate herself to this son, this son that was coming her way. It would be a lifetime vow from the womb. Verse 6, then the woman went to her, woman went to her husband and told him, a man of God came to me. He looked like an angel of God. And I love this part. In, the, in my NIV it says, very awesome. See that right there? A man of God came to me. He looked like an angel of God. Very awesome. This is like, I, you know, everybody says, when I get to heaven, I've got so much to talk to God about. I want to talk to Jesus, and I'm going to get him to tell me this. I'm going to get him to tell me that. You know what I think when we get to heaven we're going to be able to do is just fall on the ground. And I think all about what we'll all be able to get out of our mouth for the first thousand years is very awesome. Very awesome. Because this is amazing things. This, is, this man of God, guys, do you realize we are seeing a miracle here? This angel of the Lord, capital L, when you see that in the Old Testament, that is a pre-incarnate vision. That is Jesus Christ coming down to man. What did Brother Allen preach about last week? God coming down to us. Isn't it amazing? We go to Samson, and the first thing we see is Jesus coming down to us. And he's, he's giving her this statement. It's a big deal. God coming down to us. This was Jesus Christ before he would take on flesh. Now, he looked in the form of a man, but before he'd take on flesh like he did when he came to die on the cross a thousand years later, he came and appeared. And said, you're going to have a son. And here's how I want you to raise him. Here's what I need you to do, Mom. You imagine Jesus coming to you, Mom, and saying, here, you're going to have a son. And here's what I want you to do. And here's how I need you to prepare. Mm. Amazing. Amazing. Verse 7, but he said to me, you will become pregnant and have a son. Now then, drink no wine or other fermented drink and do not eat anything unclean because the boy will be a Nazarite of God from the womb until the day of his death. Very awesome. 
Wow. Then Manoah prayed to the Lord. Now, listen to me. Here's kind of a little marriage lesson. When your wife comes to you and says, God is, is showing me something. God is leading me into something. Don't sit there and go, well, you're silly or you're crazy or just listen to what they're saying. And on the other side, when the husband speaks, listen to what they're saying. Now listen to me. Just to win an argument, don't go say, listen, God talked to me and he said, you're wrong. Okay? <laughs> that, that's, that's not what we're talking about here. Okay? That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about when God speaks to one of you, you listen. Guys, I cannot tell you how many times in my marriage that I didn't know what to do. And I went to my wife, and I said, what do you think? And she said, well, I've been praying about it, and here's what I think. Sometimes I said, I agree. Sometimes, shame on me, I said, I, I think I want to go this way. <laughs> Every time that I asked her about it, she had the right answer. And Dana's not the wisest of all the land, but you know why she had the answer? Because she'd been praying. Listen to me, husbands and wives. Support each other. Pray for each other. Pray when they don't pray. The other one pray when the other one's not praying. Lift each other up. Encourage each other. Quit screaming at each other. The kids are watching. They're seeing how, this is how I do life. If I'm going to be like mom and dad, I'm going to do life like this. Guys, I hear countless people tell me, well, I just don't want much to do with church. I seen that modeled when I was little, and I don't want nothing to do with it. Listen to me. You need to model Jesus in the right way. You need to model Jesus in the right way. It can cause some of your kids to never come to know Christ. Let me put a little pressure on you, okay? Let me put a little pressure on you. Because, guys, listen to me. When we said, I do, to Jesus Christ, we have to be all in. We have to be all in. We can't live the way we want during the week and just come and smile at church and think the kids understand. No, they see what goes on behind the scenes. That's when they want to see if you're real or not. Manoah could have said, woman, you're crazy. You don't have no children. You're not ever going to have any children. Then Manoah prayed to the Lord, but he didn't. He prayed. He said, we need to pray about this. Pardon your servant, Lord. I beg you to let the man of God you sent to us come again to teach us how to bring up the boy who is to be born. God heard Manoah, and the angel of God came again to the woman while he was out in the field, but her husband Manoah was not with her. The woman hurried to tell her husband, he's here. The man who appeared to me the other day, he is here. Manoah got up and followed his wife, verse 11. Then he came to, to the man. He said, are you the man who talked to my wife? I am, he said. Remember who this is. This is Jesus, pre-incarnate. Pre-incarnate's a big church word. Is before he came as a baby and had, had human skin, fully God, fully man. This is pre-incarnate. So Manoah asked him, when your words are fulfilled, what is to be the rule that governs the boy's life and work? And really what he's asking, can you tell me the future? I tell you what, and we got our girls a few years back. Today, by the way, it popped up in my memories. 14 years ago today, we got the call to come get Annie on Saturday. 14 years ago today. It's just amazing, you get a call on Monday. I know all these mamas would have liked to have done this. You get a call on Monday, Saturday, go pick her up, all done? Dana kind of cheated a little bit. But guys, we, this, this, is a, this is a big deal. He wanted to know the future of this boy. I looked at my grandson yesterday. We were over having ice cream at Dairy Queen. And I'm sitting there at Cleo, and I'm going, what is this boy going to see? How's he going to turn out? Man, we're praying. We want him to be a, a godly man. But, but God doesn't let us see the future. He says, I want you to trust me. 
and I want you to pray, prepare your kids today for tomorrow. And then tomorrow, we're going to prepare them for the next day. And that's the way we do it. I'm sure Manoah would have loved to say, show me what Samson's going to be. Show me what he's going to do. Show me why you're giving this boy now. Show me. Just like we all did. What is our kids going to face? What are they going to go through? What are they going to battle? And maybe, thank goodness, maybe it's a blessing that we don't see the future. Because maybe it would cause us to be not as strong as we need to be. Maybe he just wants us to trust him day by day. Day by day. What is to be the rule that governs the boy's life and work? Verse 13, the angel of the Lord answered, we're almost done. You, your wife must do all that I have told her. She must not eat anything that comes from the grapevine, nor drink any wine or any fermented drink, nor eat anything unclean. She must do everything I've commanded her. He just kind of restates what he already said to her. Manoah said to the angel of the Lord, we would like you to stay until we prepare a young goat for you. We, we'd like to give you dinner. That's, I guess that's still one of the greatest hospitalities that we know. We, hey, let me take you to dinner. Let me take you to lunch. Bring your family over. We, we still want to show hospitality. They want to say, show gratefulness. They want to show thankfulness to the Lord. The angel of the Lord replied, even though you detain me, I will not eat any of your food, but if you prepare a burnt offering, offer it to the Lord. It's, you know, he's in that state. Yes, he appears as a man, he appears as an angel, but he, he doesn't need to be fed. He's God. He's God's son. He doesn't need a dinner. Now, when he's here fully God, fully man, he, he ate. But here he said, just, just prepare an offering. Give a burnt sacrifice to the Lord. Let's just have church. Let's just worship. Then Manoah inquired of the angel of the Lord, what is your name? So that we might, may honor you when your, when your word comes true. I love this part here. He replied, why do you ask my name? It is beyond understanding. It's kind of like he said, you wouldn't believe it if I told you. If you look at the translation of this, you know what it is? It's wonderful. My name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. He said, if I told you, you couldn't even handle it. It's just wonderful. Someday when we see him in heaven, You know the song, I Can Only Imagine? I don't know, Gary. I just, I don't know if we'll be able to utter much. It's just going to be wonderful. It's going to be wonderful. We look back and all the trials of this life are over. We don't have to do funerals no more. We don't have to go to the hospitals and ICU no more. <clears throat> we don't have to fight cancer no more. His name is wonderful. If I could beg you this morning, if you're sitting here this morning and you don't know Jesus, he can make your life wonderful. Please don't wait. I'm as serious as I can be. Please don't wait. Because at the end of this journey, you're going to be judged. And if your house is on the rock of Christ, you're going to live forever with him. If you built it on your own property, you're going to spend eternity without Jesus Christ in a place of torment. And listen, you really don't have to go any further. We can argue about flames and torment and all that, I believe, is as true as it can be. But when I say you're going to have to spend eternity without Jesus Christ, I don't think it gets any worse than that. Everything else, you can just throw it on there, and it's just going to get more and more worse. But an eternity without the grace of God? Listen, folks, this world's a mess. But you know what still is alive and well in this world? The grace of God. 
That's why we can survive from day to day. Because the grace of God. That's why we all don't get up and just kill each other right now. Because the grace of God. We live in the age of grace. His name is wonderful. Takes us back to Isaiah 9. You will give birth to a son. And you will call him wonderful. Counselor. Everlasting Father. Almighty. The Prince of Peace. Wow. Listen to me. Time and time and time and time again, your Bible points to the one. Here he comes, John the Baptist said. Here he comes. Behold, the perfect Lamb of God. He said, I ain't even worthy to baptize you. And Jesus said, I need you to do this for me. Hmm. He's amazing. Then Manoah took a young goat together with the grain offering and sacrificed it on a rock to the Lord. Hmm, On a rock, that's amazing. And the Lord did an amazing thing while Manoah and his wife watched. As the flame blazed up from the altar toward heaven, the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame. Wow. Seeing this, Manoah and his wife fell with their faces to the ground. When the angel of the Lord did not show himself again to Manoah and his wife, Manoah realized that it was the angel of the Lord. And he just panics. We're going to die. You remember what Moses said? He, we're going to die. We've seen God. We've seen the face of God. We're doomed to die, he said to his wife. We have seen God. And once again, that calming spirit of his wife, just as he trusted her, now she's going to encourage him. When his wife answered, if the Lord had meant to kill us, he would not have accepted a burnt offering and grain offering from our hands nor shown us all these things, or now told us this. And then the woman gave birth, nine months later, and named him Samson. He grew, and the Lord blessed him. And I love this verse right here. And we'll leave you with this. And the Spirit of the Lord began to stir in him. Woo, this is going to get good. And the Spirit of the Lord began to stir in him while he was in Manadan between Zorah and Eshdel. I pray this morning that the Spirit of the Lord is stirring in you. I pray he is stirring in you today. This young boy, he's coming from not so good a background. These folks have really not made much of God like they should have. These crazy Israelites all through Judges, they just kept denying God and falling on their knees and praying to him and he'd rescue them. You know, it just seems like we don't ever talk to God unless things are at a break moment in our life. You know, there's a tornado on the way, so I better pray. And the Spirit of God began to stir in this man. Now I'm telling you, God wants to do great things in this man's life. Over the next several weeks, we're going to see what God wanted to do. We're going to see where Samson did his own thing. That never works out well. We're going to see when he would fall on his knees and obey God, how things would go. And you know, I'm not so sure. We were talking about that when they used to make old movies and they always had Samson, you know, he was the most muscular dude in the, in the movie. But you know, when you read the story of Samson, everybody thought they could whip him. Now listen, if I'm this big muscle dude, Benton, and you see me, you're not going to tackle with me much, all right? But I'm not sure, he had a lot of muscles. You know what he did have in him, though? The Spirit of the Lord began to move in this boy. The power of God moved in him. And so I think everybody thought they could whoop him. It's kind of like that skinny dude at the playground. And everybody said, I'm going to get a piece of him. And next thing you know, they're laying on the ground calling and hollering for their mama, you know. But I'm not so sure he was this big universal bodybuilder. I think he was just a normal man. But he had something that we can have too. And if you've been saved, you have it. The power of God lives in you.
Mm, it's going to be good. Y'all ready? Buckle your seatbelts. We're going to have a good time. Thank you for being here today. Let me just pause with this. Let me bow, ask you to bow your heads. As we think about God moving in our lives, let me ask you this. When's the last time you felt the Spirit moving in your soul? Is it on a daily basis? Is it on a weekly basis? Maybe you feel like God's a long way away. And you haven't really felt him moving in your soul. Why don't you ask him right now? Say, Lord, I repent. I'm sorry I've moved away from you. I know you are promised to stay close to me. But Lord, I know that I've left. And I ask you to stir in my heart once again, Lord. Maybe you're here today and you've never accepted Christ as your Savior. And you, you just want to, you just said, I'm, I'm tired of fighting this on my own. I feel something moving in my heart this morning. And I believe it's the Holy Spirit pulling me to give my heart to Christ. Listen, when the Holy Spirit calls, you listen. You listen. Whatever it is. Maybe he wants you to join this family. But I just ask you to do what God asked you to do this morning, okay? Lord, this is your time. Lord, I go quiet and you get loud and move in the hearts of people today. In your name I pray.